In the last lecture, we have studied how to construct Moore machines, and in this lecture, we will be seeing another example of construction of Moore machine. Okay, so here is our example. Construct a Moore machine that counts the occurrences of the sequence ABB in any input strings over AB. So our task is to design a Moore machine that takes any inputs over AB as the input and it should count how many times does the sequence ABB occur in the input string. So how can we do this? We know that Moore machine should also give outputs. So how can we design the Moore machine in such a way that from the output that it gives we can count the number of times that the sequence A, B, B occur. So here we have our inputs as A, B and we have the output or delta as let us say zeros and ones. Okay, now from this how can we design the Moore machine? So we can design in such a way that whenever we encounter the sequence A, B, B we can print a one we can give the output as 1. So, at the end we can count or we can see how many times does 1 appear in the output and we can know that that many times the sequence ABB has occurred in the input string. Okay, so let's see how we can design it. In order to design this, let us do it in a simple way that is we will first try to design a DFA that accept all strings that ends with A bb over ab so let me start with my starting state which i will call state a a will be my starting state or the initial state and a will go to the next state that is b on getting what input should i send a to b i will send a to b if it gets the input a because i am trying to get the sequence abb now b will go to the next state which i will call state c when will it go to state C? It will go to state C when it gets the input B. Okay, and now we are in state C, and C will go to the next state which I will call state D on getting the input. What will be the input? B. So A, B, B is the sequence I am trying to get. So A, B, B. But this DFA is not complete because we have not mentioned where does these states go on both the inputs. In A, I already mentioned where it should go on getting the input small a. But I did not mention what happens if it gets the input small b. If it A gets the input small b, I will keep it in A itself because I want to get the sequence a, b, b. And after coming to b, in b, I already mentioned what happens if it gets small b. But what if it gets a small a? So I come like this A, B and if I get a small A again then what happens? I should keep it in B itself because if I get a small A I will keep it in B itself because I want to get A then B, B. Until I get B, B I don't want to proceed. Okay, now coming to state C. What will happen to state C? On getting input B it will go to D. But what happens if it gets a small A? So suppose let's say that I came to state C like this A, B, I came like this A, B and then in state C if it gets a B it will go to D. Okay and we get the sequence A, B, B but instead of a B suppose I get an A then what happens? If it gets an A then I have to wait for another B and B. Then only I can get the sequence A, B, B. So in C if I get a A where should I send it? I will send it to this state called state b if it gets the input small a why if it comes to this one i can get a b b i could get i imagine or i assume that i could get a b and b and come to d getting the sequence a b b okay now c is complete now what about d in d i did not mention what will happen if it gets input small a or small b now let's say we get the input small a so suppose let's say we came to d like this a b b I came like this A, B, B and if I get a small A what should ha what will happen? I will wait for another B and another B so that I can get this sequence. So in D if I get a small A what will happen? I should send it to the place from where it can get a B and B again. So where is that? That is 
state B because if I send it to state B I can get B B again so I will send D to B if it gets the input small a okay now we mentioned what happens if it gets small a now what if it gets small b now let's say again we came like this a b b we got a b b and we get a b again we get a b again then what happens now if i get a b again then there is no way that our sequence sequence can proceed unless i get another a b b again so I should send it to the place from where it can get another A, B, B again. And where is that? That is in state A. If I send it to state A, I can get A, B, B again. So I will send this D. Let it go to state A over here. If it gets the input small b. Now our DFA is complete. So in this DFA, when do we know that we got the input A, B, B? It is in state D. Whenever you reach state D, whether it is from any path, whenever you reach state D, it is sure that you have got the sequence A, B, B. Let's see. If, if you come like this, A, 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 B, B. So at the end, you see that there was an A, B, B. So whenever you reach the sequence, uh, the state D, we are sure that we got the sequence A, B, B. So at this point, I will give the output as 1. In D, I will give the output as 1. And in the other states, I will give output as 0. Now, why is that? Because whenever we get the output 1, we realize that we have got the sequence ABB. So, in D, we give the output as 1. Now, let's take a few examples and check if this is working fine. Let's say I take the... Uh, let me take the example over here. Let's say that we are checking for the string itself A, B, B. Now I start with my starting state which is state A and A even before it gets any input it has an output associated with it which is 0. So A prints 0 in the beginning and on getting this small a what happens? A goes to B. A goes to B and what output does B have? 0. Okay and then we get a B again small b and we are in state B. In B if I get a small b it goes to state C and in state C what does it print? It prints a 0 and we are in state C and get another B and in state C if you get small b it goes to state D and in state D what is the output it prints? It prints 1. It prints a 1. So when we analyze this output we find that we got a 1 over here and when we get the 1 we realize that the sequence ABB was encountered. So here you got the sequence ABB and you printed 1 and how many 1's are there in this? There is only 1 1. So that shows that the sequence A, B, B was encountered just once or one time. Now let's take another example. Let's say we are getting it two times. A, B, B, A, B, B. Now what happens? We start with starting state A. And in A, we have the output 0 associated with it. And A on getting small a, where does it go? It goes to B, printing a 0. If we get small b, what happens? It goes to state C printing a 0 in state C and in state C if I get another B it goes to say D printing a 1 okay and in state D again I get A in state D if I get A where does it go it goes to state B and what does state B print it prints 0 and in state B if I get small b it goes to state C printing a 0 in state C and state C on getting small b it goes to state D printing a 1 so for this input we are getting the output 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 and how many ones are there 1 2 we got two number of ones why because the sequence a b b a b b this was encountered two times so we are able to count the occurrences of the sequence a b b in any input strings over a b so this is the more machine that we have designed for that so i hope this was clear to you thank you for watching and see you in the next one